All right, so some updated information on Stefan Bonner. And the reason why I think this is an important video to do is because in 2023, everyone's always trying to figure out why a person died. You know, you hear a person died, it's like, okay, well, what happened? And aside from just the way that kind of everybody's always trying to figure out how a person died out of A, curiosity, and B, trying to um, evaluate your own mortality and the likelihood that you could go out to something similar, there are a lot of things going on that, like, you know you you want to know about it. it's like all right well so did he die of a heart attack they said that he died of a heart attack uh due to a staph infection initially that like he had a he had a long untreated staph infection that got to his heart and that's why uh that's why he was he he was killed however uh as of today that has been updated to a very common you know cause of death in 2023 which was a fentanyl overdose so that is official now. He died of a fentanyl overdose. And I want to talk about that. I'm going to read this story because I haven't read it yet. All I've seen is the headline. And then also, you know, and listen, like like I was just saying, people want to know why people died because it's like, oh, is it a heart attack? And it's like, well, you know, had he, uh, you know what I mean? Is it possible it's from that? Does he have a history of blood clots? And, you know, it's like there are all these things kind of floating around, fentanyl, the shot. And I don't know. It just seems important. And, and I have a story because... One of my closest friends from high school died uh, on Thursday of last week of something very uh, of that Thursday of last week. So what's today? Tuesday. So Monday, Sunday, Saturday, five days ago. Okay. One of my best friends, like literally one of my absolute closest friends from high school uh, just died. And I'll tell you a little bit about that just because it's very relevant. Uh, And... We'll go from there. Uh, If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and subscribe. I appreciate you guys. Every time I do a video where I talk about this topic, I get a lot of people reaching out. Um, This is a... This is an issue that so many people struggle with. It's crazy. It's crazy how many people struggle with this issue. And I could tell you... I I mean, I I obviously know personally why. And I could talk a little bit about that. And uh, I haven't talked about that in a long time. And... um, and we'll go from there. Anyway, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I appreciate you guys doing that, and, uh, and we'll rock and roll. All right, so let me share this uh, this article first thing. Um, so, Stephen Bonnert's death. Uh, Stephen Bonnert's death in December was ruled accidental on Monday, as a coroner determined the cause as fentanyl. Uh, and the UFC Hall of Famer died on the 22nd of December at the age of 45 with presumed heart complications referenced at the time. In a letter to MMA Fighting on yesterday. The Clark County Coroner's Office in Nevada said Bonner had overdosed on fentanyl. Uh, Fentanyl is a potent synthetic opioid. I'm sure all of you guys know all about it now. Um, And then they talk about, you know, that's it, actually. Honestly, that's it. That's that's, all of the information. He died of a fentanyl overdose. And here's the thing, dude. So I have a lot of thoughts on, on fentanyl the prevalence of fentanyl deaths and i'll and i'll go through those really quick okay there's a reason why so many people are nodding out and dying on fentanyl okay there's a couple reasons number one number one is because it is so potent and it is so cheap okay and so if you have anything that is incredibly potent at such a tiny minuscule amount then opportunistic criminals are going to figure out ways to sell it to people. And there are a lot of people, a lot, a lot, lot, lot of people who are never going to knowingly buy fentanyl. It will never happen. They will never be like, hey, man, you got that fent, right? There are a lot of people who would never do that. Now, once they've uh, once they've had it in their body and knowingly had it in their body that might change but they'll never break the seal on their own right they would never just be like man i just i gotta get that let me get that fin and so to get around that problem right they put it in all kinds of other things right and but the most damaging one in my opinion to like regular folks who are not the kind of drug addicts that you would expect to die is they press them into what looks like oxy pills or they make them look like Vicodin. They make them look like just regular pharmaceuticals that everybody has taken a million times if you're that type of addict. You know, things where you think you know you're exactly what you're getting. And to those of you who have no experience with that type of pill addiction, listen. Okay, like the yellow the yellow Norcos that used to have the little V on there, those were always the best. They're, they're gone now. You can't get them anymore. But like as an example, when you could, this is a really, that's like a very uh, commonly known one. They're the oval, they were yellow, they had a little V on it with a little curl on the end of the V. 
those types, it's like, dude, if you saw a yellow oval, you know, an oval Vicodin with, with a V on it, you knew exactly what that was. It's a 10 milligram, it's a 10 milligram hydrocodone pill. And it's the best one. There was, and my theory on why those were always the best is just this. Like there's, cause like when they say that there's 10 milligrams, they have like this, I think they have a little bit of a uh, wiggle room on like, if you test it exactly how much is in it. It's like, so if there's like 8.7 milligrams, it like still counts as 10 or whatever. And I've always thought that the, that those yellow Vikes and then the Watson ones were good too. They were like a little bit lighter yellow and they just said Watson on them. I always thought that those were like, they were very careful to make sure those were actually 10 milligrams versus low, like the M367s, which are the ones that are still common now. I always thought, at least back then when I used to take these and knew a lot about these different pills, I was like, I guarantee if you test these, these are like 8.5 because they were just weaker. They weren't as strong as the yellows. The reason I'm talking about this is because you know what you're getting. If you're an experienced pill person, you knew what you were getting. Okay. Now, if someone gave me a handful of those things now, I wouldn't take one if it's if my life was on the line because my life is on the line if I take one of those because it absolutely inevitably, if I do, if I, if you give me 10 of those and it's like, woo, all right, 10, it's fine. What could happen with 10? I'll take three of them for three days and then I'll be like, God, I forgot how incredible that was and I will seek out more shit and I will find it. It's just the way it is. That's why I can't take them. I know myself well enough. My, it's, it's not, this is not a matter of like, uh, willpower it's a matter of like brain chemistry so i just won't take them i will not take them i won't take them no matter what but the point that i'm making is you used to know exactly what they were okay yellow oval you knew exactly what it was now you see one of those you're oh damn it's one of those yellows dude there's like a a nine percent chance it's a yellow it, and, and like an 80 you know a 91 percent chance that it's fentanyl that's pressed to make it look like it's those little curly V yellows. I mean, well, for sure, that's what it is if you see the curly V yellows because they don't exist anymore. But like they have they have hidden fentanyl into these pills made to look like they are those other things. And in reality, they're not. That's not what they are at all. That is absolutely not what they are. They are fake. They're fentanyl. Okay. And the reason that this is so scary is because the difference between, ooh, that's nice, and you're dead is minuscule is dust tiny 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 amounts of dust and so when you have these like you know drug cartel people how are they how are they what's the, what's the process that they are mixing these and put and pressing them into the pills where it's safe okay there isn't one i'm sure okay now the way that i ended up quitting these things forever right i'd gone on and off and on and off and on and off i'd go off for i mean I mean, since we're talking about this again, I'll just tell you guys. So I got hooked on these things when I first got out of college. Okay. So I was always one of these people where like, if I found out someone had gotten their wisdom teeth out and they had 20 Vicodins, I would be, I would just, I, I would sell them into selling them to me. Even if they liked them, I was going to get most of them, you know, and I would just sell them and I would, I would get them and that, you know, I'd get 20 of them and they'd last me two weeks or something, you know, like I would take them when I went out, but I knew there was no there was no way I was going to get like a consistent source of them. So I treated them as such, right? When I got out of college, the first year out of college, I lived with this dude who was a different kind of pill addict, right? Like this is a dude who had actually had ambulances come get him from our work, which was so bizarre. He's a super yoke guy, good looking, had a hot girlfriend who like five of my buddies had sex with me included after he was together with her. It's neither here nor there. Just something I'm throwing in there, but true. Uh, and he, but he was so resourceful. He was the number one sales guy. Like we worked at a place called Mike's mobile windshield and you made real money, dude. He was making like, he was making like 12 grand a month in college. It was just like some kind of insurance loophole. And so we would just be on the phone, you know, especially during the summers and we'd be selling people on getting their windshield glass replaced. Didn't cost them anything, whatever. And we got big commissions anyway, but he was always number one. And he actually had an ambulance have to come pick him up from Mike's mobile windshield because he was on so many oxys that he just nodded out. Like he would just walk around sweating his face off and he's all, he's not close. So many people today. I, he was incredibly successful and a complete and total drug addict train wreck. So I lived with this guy after school. Cause like, I didn't really know him that well. I hung out with him the last year. He was a tough guy, dude. He was like a gold gloves boxer who was always really successful. He's good looking, hot girls, whatever. And so like, I was like, all right, dude, yeah, let's, if, if you're moving down there, I'll move down. And I lived with him. 
And this guy figured out a way that you could get these pills on the internet back then, right? Like where we would just get them shipped to us. And so you could get 90 a month, 90 Norcos, 90 of those yellow curly V ones a month. And what you figure, so what, what, what's that three a day? You know, you can't like really kill yourself on three a day. You certainly get hooked. But the thing is, is if you can get 90 a day on one website, guess what you can do with two, three, four websites? 90 more for each website. And so we basically had an absolutely unlimited amount of Norcos. And I had no experience with getting addicted on opioids, none. I was right out of college. And anybody who has experience with this will tell you how quickly that gets away from you, you know? It's like you start off, you're like, all right, yeah, I take, you know, I go to work and then I take one. I just take one at night, man. Just kind of mellow myself out just a little bit, you know, watch some TV, go to sleep. And then, you know, after a couple of, you know, maybe I'll just take two at night, you know, like I'll just take two. It creeps on you slow, right? The first time. And then you're like, fuck, man, I don't feel like going to work today, dude. Like it's, it's, it's lunch. And you're like, Jesus, I got to be here till five, dude. It's 12 man, I really like how life feels when I'm on Norcos. Like, I wonder, I wonder what would it be like to take one at the office? And so you take one at 1230 and the rest of your day, you're like, Oh my God, what the hell have I been doing? Dude, work is awesome. Let's make some calls. No wonder this guy's so successful. I love work. You know, next day you're like, now I feel really terrible. Like I hate being at work. Yesterday was pretty awesome. I mean, fuck it. Then you have to take two to three at night afterwards. And then all of a sudden you're like, no, Jesus, it's not really working like it was at, at work. You know, I was taking one in the afternoon. I'll just take two. I'll just take two. It's kind of wearing off by three. What's one more? So you're taking three at work, you know, and then you're taking three at night. Now you're taking six Norcos a day, every day. And then the weekend comes. You get on your normal routine, but then you got to go out at night, dude. You got to go out at night. You know, it's like, dude, we got shit to do. It's like, I'm having a great time, you know, uh, I'm having a great time. But like, if I want to go out, like, I don't want to be like coming down on Norco. So now you're taking eight a night, you know, or eight a day, eight, nine a day. And then it's like, oh, well, and then, then you get into double digits. And at that point you start going, what the fuck am I doing? Like what I'm taking 10 Norcos a day which is there's a 10 milligrams, which means if I had the five milligram Vicodin, which most people used to get back then, that means I'm taking 20 of these fucking things a day. Jesus Christ. I'm a, I'm a fucking drug addict. What the hell am I doing? I'm a, I'm a drug. I am a drug addict. I am a drug addict, you know? And then, so you're like, I wonder what would happen if I just kind of stopped taking them. So you do for a day. And then on day two, your nose starts running. You start going, Oh my God, I'm sick, dude. Like so you take a Norco, you're like, Jesus, I don't know. I can't go through like withdrawal. And you realize you're like, holy shit, I'm a legit fucking drug addict. And it happened just like that. You know, just right under your nose. Started with one. Dude, I'll just take one at night. You know, people have a drink. People like to smoke weed. I don't like smoking weed, dude. People like to have a drink. I don't like having a drink, dude. I like Norco. So I'll just take a Norco and watch TV. You know, what's what's one Norco a night? How is that any different than this fucking asshole drinking like one you know glass of wine every night? Everybody does that shit, right? I don't drink, right? I just like to take a Norco. Everybody hates being in the office. So I take a Norco when I'm at the office. Who fucking cares? And boom, you're taking 12, 13 a day, okay? So when you hear someone say they're like, oh yeah, I've gotten up to where I was taking 25 a day. Okay, that sounds like a lot. Well, I just walked you into how you get to 10 a day like that, okay? Instantly. Like just uh, just fucking close your eyes, open them. You're on fucking you're on double digits a day without even trying, dude. Like without even trying, without any kind of effort whatsoever. Just like just being a normal person, just doing what people do. Except you just don't realize, you don't understand what those those are heroin pills. That's what they don't tell you, dude. Oxy, Norcos, they're heroin pills. That's what they are. That is fucking what they are. And I'm telling you this story because this is exactly the, the guarantee. And, and St- here's the thing. Stefan Bonnert, he's taking him for pain. He's taking him for pain, dude. You know? And, uh, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a second, dude. Hang on. I just saw something in this article. I need to Google this really quick and see if this is really what I think it is. Uh, no way. Oh, Wow. They listed, I'm not even going to say that. I am not, mm, mm. so you know my, uh, 
So one of my favorite sponsors, my favorite sponsor, one of my favorite sponsors, what, my favorite sponsor that you don't wear on your body, they've got that listed. It's all fentanyl and the other thing that, that is one of my sponsors. Yeah, fucking right that that contributed to it. You have to be fucking kidding me. I'm not even going to say, I, I just, I'm, you guys know what we're talking about, right? Anyway, so, uh, so yeah, so that's what it is, dude. Just like that. That's how it happens. Okay. And so if you've ever found yourself in that position, which I found out an absolutely overwhelming number of people have every time that I've talked about this, then you guys all know what's it like to get off. You know, once you've been taken 12, which I just walked you into easily. Or let's just, let's start, let's just go with eight, dude. You're taking eight a day. That's easy. That's not even hard. Like getting to eight a day, that's not hard at all. If all you have to do is just hate your office job, right? Just hate your office job and like taking Norcos. Boom. I can get you to eight a day in three months. Easy. Easy peasy. If you have an unlimited supply of them, it's easy. And what's that like? You know, what's that like? Do they still feel really, really good? That's the thing is they stop working, right? That's how you start bumping your dose. They stop working. You are literally taking whatever your dose was to not get sick, you know? And when I say sick, I'm not talking like, I'm not talking regular sick. I'm talking the most, the, 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 the most worst you've ever felt in your entire life. And you can, absolutely you can wean yourself down. All you have to do is just accept feeling like shit for months. You know, like, you know, like it's, you're not in, you're not in absolute dire agony. Like you are, if you kick cold Turkey, which will last for about three and a half days, the worst you've ever felt in your entire life ever. You kick cold off 10 you will want to die you'll want to fucking die you kick cold off 20 it's a different i mean 10 10 kicking cold off 10 with no help like i mean like no help no kratom no like no uh you know no um i don't know there's this drug that's for um oh god for parkinson's that I can't requip. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm saying that I, I'm not recommending any of these things, by the way. I'm just saying like people have told me that that shit helps, you know, but if you do it with none of that, whew, man, you will want to, fu- I mean, you're going to want to die anyway. So you're trapped. It's like a prison, dude. It's a prison. You know, you take it. It doesn't even feel that good anymore. You don't take it. You feel like you're going to die. You can feel that all of your emotions are blocked off. You can't connect with people anymore. You know that like there's something like there's something wrong. You know, like that you you you're not engaging with the world the way that you used to. You're you're blocked off. Your light is completely shut down. It's a fucking nightmare. And you're and you're trapped, right? So it's a terrible place to be. And that's just on regular fucking Norcos. Okay. With the fentanyl, right? With the fentanyl. You might take one of these. And like I said, you know exactly what they do. That's how you kind of systematically get up to what we were talking about. With the fentanyl ones, and this is why I was saying, this is how I kicked forever, is I got a batch of what I thought were oxys, and they were weird, dude. Like, I I could tell that they were different, you know, like they were different colors, and like, one would be really fucking like, and the other one would be all crumbly, and I was like, okay, this is not good. And I knew, I fucking knew, I knew they were going to be fentanyl, you know, like, and so I googled fake, uh, fake 30 milligram oxys, and the picture in the fucking article was the exact ones I had. I was like, oh, that's a good, that's a good sign. So I ordered a drug test because, you know, it could test specifically for fentanyl. And, you know, I was like, all right, whatever, we'll just see. And it'll get here in two days. So by the time the test got here, I had been taking them for two days and they were the fucking bomb, son. Felt like the first time I'd ever taken anything. I was like, man, I already knew it was gonna be fentanyl. I tested, they were, but by then... You know, I, I told you I would have never done it in a million years on my own, but now I've tried it, you know, now I've tried it and it's fantastic. It's amazing. It's the best I've ever felt in my entire life. So yeah, I asked for, I just asked for a price discount <laughs> and I did those for a couple of months and then I realized I'm like, oh, I'm taking fentanyl every day. And there was one time where I took one pill, which had been pretty consistent. And I was like, wow, uh, also that dude, the guy who originally I lived with, who knew how to get him on the internet, dead, fentanyl overdose. So between that, between that and that, I quit, never take them ever again, 
the end, right? So, you know, I've been off those for years now, but bottom line is you're, if, if I'm not judging anybody for this shit because I know exactly what it's like. And it's not, you know, it's a matter of biology and circumstance. People are like, oh man, these fucking drug addicts. It's like, mm-hmm. oh yeah. Hey, you like drinking, you, you ever drink alcohol? Yeah, dude, but I'm not like, blah, blah. Okay, so like you do, you like the feeling of feeling drunk? Well, yeah, okay, well, I don't. You ever smoke weed? Ooh, I love smoking weed. Cool, I don't. I don't at all. I fucking hate smoking weed. What about like, I don't know, like what about like a, what about a Xanax? Oh, Xanax is nice. Yeah, no, I fucking hate Xanax. Hate it. What about blow? Uh, I mean, I don't like to do it a lot, but yeah, I fucking love blow. Cool, I hate blow, okay? There's only one thing I fucking like is those. And it just so happens it's the most addictive substance on the fucking earth. So what, I'm just cursed to live sober. Everybody else gets to do whatever the fuck they want. I'm the sober guy. So fuck you. But anyway, so yeah, that was my experience. But yeah, I mean, so I had to get off of them altogether and never touch them again. But anyway, so yeah, that dude died. The one that I lived with, uh, you know, fentanyl overdose. And then this last week, uh, one of my best friends from high school, just a good dude, but had a raging, raging drug problem. He and I used to like go get pills together. I mean, we're talking... 10 I don't know maybe 12 10 12 years ago and I you know I cleaned up he got worse he just I mean he was always worse but like he just got worse and worse and worse I've realized now that like right around this age this is when your body gives out like f- like from like 38 to like 45 is like if you've been ripping your fucking body with drugs and I'm talking like drugs and then like no exercise, like really not doing yourself any favors. Cause like he was one of those guys who were like, I don't think that he had gone three days sober in 20 years, you know? And he like, and you know how I was saying the only thing I like is that, okay. So well, he likes, he loves those. He loves blow. He loves Adderall. He loves, he loves uh, Xanax. He loves Klonopin. He loves weed. He loves booze. He loves, smoked two packs of cigarettes a day. Like there's nothing this guy would not put in his body. And he finally fucking died last week. So it's a tragedy it's a tragedy. There's no two ways about it. You know, like it was like when he, so he went into a coma, he went into a coma and the, the first, like, so he was in a coma and, and my initial reaction to it was like, I just like thought about, I'm like, fuck dude, no one could have helped this fucking guy. He's such a goddamn train wreck. Like we all tried to talk to him and he just, he like, you can't help a guy who doesn't want to be helped. And, uh, and when he died, it, it was as if like someone took like a windshield wiper and just went whoosh, and all of the memories that I had of him all train wrecked, you know, just were like, whoosh, and it was like, do you remember, don't you remember what he was like? And then all I could remember is like what he was really like, you know, and like, cause he was fucking hilarious. He's one of the funniest guys in the world. The reason why people put up with his shit for so many years is because everyone knew he's like a genuinely really good person who was hilarious. He just had a fucking demon inside of him, man. I went to Europe with him for for a couple weeks when we were 18, like me, him and a couple of my other best friends and uh Yeah, like now now whenever I think about him, that's what I think about. Is I think about like I think about what he was like when he wasn't all wrecked. And I can just hear his laugh over and over. And like, that's, I just hear him laughing now. And like, I can like, I can picture his face exactly. When like he had made fun of somebody and we were like laughing together or someone made fun of him and we were laughing together. And it's like, shit's not a game, dude. But you can't help people that don't want to be helped. You can't do it. It can't be done. You can't, it can't be done. It cannot be done. You can put them, you can put them in circumstances where you, where like maybe they'll recognize it, you know, where it's like, dude, all you have to do is just get off this shit and this is what your life will be. But you can't force them, dude. Steve-O talked about this with Bam Margera. Bam Margera is bankrupt. I mean, Bam Margera is this dude. Bam Margera is this, it's Bam Margera and, and this dude are the same, were, were. 
so Bam Margera is bankrupt, right? Like he has no money. He has nothing. He's been in and out of like facilities and stuff. He wanted, they wanted him on the ja- the new Jackass movie. He's going to make $5 million for the fucking Jackass movie. And, uh, and in his contract, he's not allowed to drink. He couldn't stay sober. And they, he gets kicked off the fucking movie. It's like, I mean, that's what you're dealing with. A bankrupt person, given the opportunity to make $5 million, all they have to do is just not take drugs or drink. They come into it sober, coming straight out of rehab. Can't do it. Can't do it, dude. Can't do it. There's a demon inside of them, dude. I don't I I don't pretend to understand it. I do think that there is a huge issue with these with these drug you know like these drug counseling facilities where they're not actually there to like make you sober. I think that if you could get them actually sober for real, like not not taking different fucking drugs, which is what they do. Put them on different drugs. That's not sober. That's not fucking sober. That shit ain't fucking sober. <clears throat> Suboxone's not sober. Okay, methadone is not fucking sober. Whatever these antipsychotics you put these people on, that's not fucking sober. Do you think Britney Spears is sober? You think Bam Margera is sober? They give him a fucking handful of pills. I'm talking sober, sober, actual fucking sober. Make them suffer through it, dude. Put them in a place where they do not have access to this shit and get them through the hard part and then let them feel what it's like to be actually sober and let them feel that for two months and they will come out of that. They will stay sober. But that's just not, this, you know. I don't know. I mean, maybe they'd stay sober. Anyway, so Stefan Bonner died of a fentanyl overdose. So did my buddy and uh, my second buddy, actually. This one, this one was much closer than my other one. The other one was a close buddy too, dude. But not like, not like this dude. Not like this, dude. Anyway, that's what I got.